We've recently reviewed the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, which you can watch in the top right corner over here. We found that it's a solid flagship with a killer 200 megapixel main camera that takes some stunning photos. But in the smartphone world, there's already a camera benchmark, the iPhone 14 Pro. It too has gone through a hardware refresh and now there's pixel binning for the first time. But how do the images from the Samsung compare? And how does the iPhone fare against the champion of pixel binning? Let's find out together. Let's start with the main cameras first, which are the stars of both these phones. The Galaxy S23 Ultra uses a 200 megapixel sensor, which can bin down to 50 or 12.5 megapixels, depending on the requirements. The iPhone is late to the pixel binning game, and the 14 Pro's 48 megapixel sensor outputs a 12 megapixel photo by default. Both devices can output raw images, but the Galaxy S23 Ultra stops at 50 megapixels, you can't get a raw version of a 200 megapixel photo. That's just as well, because even a raw 50 megapixel photo comes in at a whopping 130 megabytes. By comparison, the iPhone 14 Pro's 48 megapixel raw photos are only around 70 megabytes, which is still pretty huge. Anyway, we tested both these phones in 12 megapixel JPEG format, as this will max out the computational abilities of both phones. As you can see here, both the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro shoot excellent photos in bright daylight, with plenty of detail to go around. They perform very similarly in the center of the photo. But look in the corners and you'll find some softness in the S23 Ultra's photo that isn't visible on the iPhones, which is sharper from corner to corner. You can also see that the noise reduction on the S23 Ultra wipes out a lot of fine detail on the walls, which the iPhone leaves intact. Zooming back out, both phones deliver great dynamic range, but the iPhone tends to underexpose the image, and surprisingly, its white balance is also a little warmer. That was previously a Samsung trademark. I'm also not a fan of how the iPhone brings the brightness of the colors way down. I'm pretty sure that's not what the sky and the CMB banner look like in real life. This stands in stark contrast to the S23 Ultra, which is just a little bit too bright for my liking. The differences continue when you look at the photos from the ultra-wide cameras. Both the Samsung and the iPhone use 12 megapixel sensors here, and they're both quite a bit softer than their main cameras. But you can see that the S23 Ultra has a slight edge when it comes to fine detail. In overcast conditions, the iPhone again underexposes the image, but this time the colors are more true to life, whereas the S23 Ultra tries its hardest to make it look sunny. You can clearly see the blues in the sky and the greens in the trees and the water. There's a lot of processing happening here, which is probably why there's quite a bit more noise in these areas compared to the iPhone. It's in the telephoto cameras where the S23 Ultra starts to pull away from the iPhone 14 Pro. Both phones offer 3x telephoto zoom, but even though the iPhone has a slight 2 megapixel advantage over the Samsung's 10 megapixel sensor, the S23 Ultra's images are sharper. And then you come to the Samsung's first key advantage. For a start, it has a 10x telephoto camera, which the iPhone lacks. I mean, you can zoom in digitally, but it delivers nothing like the kind of detail, even though the S23 Ultra is itself a little soft at this focal length. The iPhone's digital zoom also tops out at 15x, whereas the S23 Ultra's space zoom uses the 200 megapixel main camera, the 10x telephoto, and some AI magic to whip up some incredible images. The 30x digital zoom actually looks better than the 10x optical zoom, although as expected, the 100x zoom is barely usable. As for portrait mode, both devices did cutouts very well, even around the arms, an area where the iPhone once struggled. Notably, the 14 Pro consistently managed to isolate the straps on Anip's backpack, whereas the S23 Ultra simply blurred the edges out. Samsung's biggest strength is in hair, the S23 Ultra cuts it out in a more natural manner, instead of simply skimming across the top of the head like the iPhone does. But it's not perfect. Check out the area around my hands. The iPhone also managed to distinguish between my two arms, blurring the right side to give a greater sense of depth instead of making me look like a cutout. The quality of the blur and roll-off is also slightly more realistic. A few surprising traits emerge when the sun goes down. 
and the bright artificial light is the Samsung that underexposes the image, and the cooler color tones make it way too blue and magenta-y. Both devices apply a lot of sharpening, more so for the S23 Ultra, but the Samsung also throws on some very aggressive noise reduction, and the result is that certain textures are almost completely wiped out. The effect can look quite artificial. Otherwise, these phones take great images in low light, but the iPhone 14 Pro can't eradicate the iPhone's biggest weakness, internal reflections coming from direct light sources. You can see them here in the top left corner. They're from the MyV in the bottom left. Where the S23 Ultra comes into its own is in very low light. The two times wider optical image stabilization and the improvement in AI-driven noise reduction has enabled Samsung to push its night mode further. And you can see that it takes bright photos even in very dark conditions. Some of these images can pass off as evening shots. The new quad pixel autofocus also gives the S23 Ultra a decisive advantage over the iPhone 14 Pro's dual pixel system, enabling it to achieve focus even on some very difficult subjects. Here, you can see that the Samsung managed to lock onto the flowers, whereas the iPhone focused on the leaves. And the result is far greater fine detail. Let's now look at video performance, the one area where the iPhone has once held an unassailable lead. The iPhone 14 Pro still takes nicer, smoother videos, probably because of the slowest shutter speed, but the S23 Ultra captures more detail. The S23 Ultra's improved OIS makes itself known in its super steady mode, which wipes the floor with the iPhone's action mode when it comes to stabilization, with far fewer vibrations showing. Both phones are capped at 2.7K resolution in this mode, so don't expect 4K here. The S23 Ultra does also offer the option of 8K video, but it takes a tighter crop to the sensor, so you get a narrower view. The one area where the iPhone 14 Pro wins hands down is selfies. Both use 12 megapixel front cameras, but the iPhone not only delivers more detail, but also more natural colors. The S23 Ultra made Anip look like he had jaundice. I will say there are a few things that Samsung needs to work on. The first is the shutter lag. This was a problem with the S22 Ultra, and it continues here, especially when shooting 50 and 200 megapixel photos and super steady videos. It's much improved with the latest updates, but it's still there. It really ruins the point and shoot nature that we simply expect from high-end smartphones these days. The second is that while the real-time stabilization is really good, it kind of screws up your framing. It makes it hard to pan smoothly in super steady mode. And when using space zoom in particular, you're constantly fighting against the phone just to get the shot you want. So, what can we draw from this comparison? As expected, both phones capture excellent photos in a variety of environment and lighting conditions. And generally, you'd be pleased to go with either. The iPhone 14 Pro delivers slightly better sharpness across the entire image, and it also shoots videos that are a bit more pleasing to the eye. But even though I like the more natural look of the iPhone's photos, I think most people will prefer the Galaxy S23 Ultra's more processed look. The Samsung also has the more versatile camera system. It has a far greater zoom range, shoots brighter photos at night, and offers better video stabilization. And Best of all, you can shoot 200 megapixel images that you can show off to your friends. If you're looking for the camera that's truly worth the high price of admission of these two phones, well, the S23 Ultra's got it. It's that good. Thank you so much for watching this camera comparison desk between the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro. Over to you now. What do you think? Do you agree with the results? Is there something else you want to see from the S23 Ultra? Let us know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and ring the notifications bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. As always, stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.